Good evening, Commonwealth. Thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Chris Nelson. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Power out to the northern part of the island as a local man rams into a power pole. Also tonight, a woman claims she was subjected to unwanted sexual advances by casino high rollers. And Skymark Airlines is just about ready to fly. The big question is when. We may get some details of that this week. In sports, the ever-shifting winds of change blow over games we used to play. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Forty-eight hours. That's all we get in a week. But those 48 hours? We try to make them last forever. How? By filling in fast with all the right stuff. With a lot of laughter. A little drama. Some adventure. And a whole lot of love. Dad, Mom's here. It happens pretty quick, Bye, Dad. but it's cool. Because the rest of the week, we talk about our plans. You want to go to the beach? On how to make the next 48 hours last us a lifetime. Shrimp Company opens daily at 11 a.m. Located on Beach Road in the heart of Garapan. Day, Tirawami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. Tonight's first story, a local man passed out this afternoon, lost control of his vehicle, and rammed into a power pole, knocking out power to the northern part of Saipan. The man identified as local male, late 40s. Department of Public Safety police officer Babauta, one of those on the scene this afternoon. He was able to speak to the victim before he was transported to the hospital. According to the witnesses, they were heading uh, northbound. The operator of this vehicle was heading southbound. And then out of nowhere, this car just turned straight, like took a hard left. And they almost uh, came in uh, contact with their vehicle. And then uh, after that, he came in contact with this telephone pole over here. Yeah. So, um, and then you, you were able to talk to him before he went to the hospital? Yeah, I was. And uh, at the same time, I was also looking for uh, any alcohol detection. Nothing was uh, detected. I saw that he had a slur speech. But then again, I asked him why that why it was like that. He said uh, he had a stroke prior to this accident. So we're thinking that maybe he he had like a minor stroke during this accident. That's the reason why he blacked out and hit this telephone pole. Okay. And then now the power has uh, been yeah uh, totally out on this side, right? CUC was standing by. Power north of this area was affected after the impact led to the transformer blowing out. How long does it take to fix something like that? Just waiting for the truck now. Driver was traveling southbound and police say he blacked out, veered off the road through both northbound lanes, narrowly missing another vehicle before slamming into the power pole. Airbag inside was deployed. Police say he was covered in red. Now they were not sure if this was blood or beetle nut. It did appear that the man was chewing at the time of the accident. High rollers made unwanted sexual advances to IPI employees that were told to swim in their bikinis with VIPs at their villas. And complaints to management fell on deaf ears. That's according to a lawsuit filed today against Imperial Pacific in the U.S. District Court. Complaint was filed by the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC, 
and includes allegations of sexual harassment, sexual discrimination, retaliation, and constructive discharge. According to court documents, IPA, IPI rather, and Best Sunshine engaged in unlawful employment practices by subjecting the charging party who filed the charge of discrimination and a class of female employees to unwelcome sexual conduct by male patrons. The charging party says she worked as a VIP service host and that from December 2015 to August 2016, the high rollers subject, subjected her to regular and repeated sexual harassment, which included repeated touching and comments of a sexual nature. She says she complained to management about how the harassment offended and humiliated her, but the defendants failed to take corrective action on the matter. She says she quit in August of 2016 when she found the sexual harassment to be intolerable. Complaint filed in court, demands for a jury trial, and a summons was issued to IPI by the court. Governor Torres is scheduled to meet tomorrow morning with the president of Skymark Airlines and their team at 9 a.m. Let's take a look. Skymark Airlines is planning regular service to Saipan, but the specific start date still unknown. November 29th is one date that has been mentioned, but the airline is still having some issues with some internal systems as they prepare to launch their first international flight, so that date could be pushed. Skymark flew in three charter flights from Narita from September 20th to September the 22nd. The last batch of Japanese tourists will head home tomorrow afternoon. The flights coming in the last couple of days are coming in empty and then leaving with the passengers who arrived previously. Yesterday, the president and his team spent time under the lagoon on the Deep Star submarine. The sub made a special charter dive for the group. In the afternoon, they met with the Japanese consul. And then last night, they met the Awadori team at Kimpachi Restaurant in Garapen. Tomorrow morning, they are scheduled to meet with Governor Torres at 9 a.m. Hopefully, in the next uh, month or so, we'll have a uh, big part of uh, Skymark uh, uh, news coverage and promoting their uh, international flight here. Now I heard you're going to be interviewed for their in-flight magazine yes. for December. So, so that's, that, that's, that's, that's sort of our hope, right? That is our hope. So I hope that by, the, by this interview uh, we get uh, their magazine in time for their uh, inaugural flight. As we continue to observe Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, speakers from all over the world have come together to join the fight and commit to the cause at the Marianas High School cafeteria. About 280 students attended and heard what this coach has to say. Coach Payne, a fitness instructor and motivational speaker, went around the three public high schools today to spread inspiration and help give recognition of how important each one of us are. Being here at this organization means a lot because I think it's important that we're reaching our kids and giving them an opportunity to learn and understand that they do matter, that there's something that is special and unique about them, and they need to be encouraged, they need to be pushed. He shared his personal life experiences during the talk and believes that anyone can step up and take part of changing lives. Any platform to encourage people, or empower people, I'm all for it. I'm all for it because I feel like we all have a duty in this world and we should be responsible for that because we don't realize that when you do things like this, you're saving somebody's life. You're making an impact in somebody's life. It can't just be about us all the time. Coach Payne has been traveling across the U.S. mainland and has finally reached Saipan to share his words of encouragement. He continues to serve the people and help spark light where it is needed. Don't hold on to the hurt. Hold on to the things that's making you better. You know it hurts. I know it hurts. I know it's tough. But when it gets tough, you got to get tough. You got to find something within yourself and say, this is not over for me. I got to keep pushing myself. I'm alive for a reason. There's a reason why I'm here. You wasn't put in this world to have an easy day every day. Every day is supposed to be easy. Sometimes you're going to hurt. Sometimes you're going to cry. Sometimes you're going to smile. Sometimes the sun is going to come out and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's going to rain. Sometimes it's going to be cold. It doesn't matter. But no matter what, purpose never lies. Suicide is an ongoing issue with eight reported on Saipan this year. And this is Sally Lemis reporting for KSPN. All right, Sally Lemis reporting there. Thanks, Sally. Coming up, we take a ride to one of our community, part, community centers rather, and take part in a very special announcement. More news after the break.
Get the phone plan you're looking for at it &E. Stay connected with the strongest, widest, and most reliable network in the Marianas. Stream, share, play, shop, and surf the web with super fast 4G LTE data. Whether you need just a few gigabytes of data to get by, or if you want to go further with unlimited data, there's a plan for you. You'll always get the best price. Visit any it &E store or call us to learn more. it &E. Explore your world. Winigi PHI Pharmacy in Gofadahi, Ihinim Lomu. Our complete line of pharmaceuticals and lowest prices ensure you get the treatment that you deserve. Our compassionate, friendly, multilingual staff will take the time to get to know you, explain your medications to you, and answer any questions that you may have. Nere eyor sumaye uhalweres rem, uchu weyor safeye emwal evalisiu klalyam weres. Inumina ng inyong gamot. Ayon sa inyoreseta ng inyong doktor at alin sunod sa bilin ng inyong pharmaceutical. We accept most insurance, but in case you don't have coverage, we offer cost-effective generic drugs. PHI Pharmacy, your lifelong partner in health. PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Welcome back. You're watching the Tuesday night edition of the Channel 2 News. Saipan Northern Island delegation passed a bill which now sits with the governor to grant $94,000 to an organization that will help with services and instructions for our community of those with disabilities. Center for Living Independently takes in individuals who have disabilities to train them to properly do household tasks and activities that exercise them mentally and physically. With the money that was granted to them, they can further expand their operations and the capacity of the program. It's a nonprofit entity that caters to uh, to uh, our people that have disabilities. You know, uh, our people that are on wheelchairs, and the program is that they they train them to you know do like home economics, like you know teach them how to cook with how uh, with what the ability they have. You know uh, they teach them how to uh, uh, grow crops because uh, uh, they have a, a small farming uh, uh, behind the building and they teach them how to, you know, do laundry. It's not about their disability but more of their ability. I know that, that they're, most of them are disabled but it, it gets them uh, trained to be independent. The center has a staff of three and has split the sessions into two. So we have 57 consumers now that come to the center, uh, 40 that actually come to the center on a daily basis. So what we did was our building capacity is you can't have 40. So we split them in half. So half come on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then the other half come on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So everybody comes on Friday. And Friday we usually have activity days. The tour states that the funds will also be used to pay the water and power of the center. More activities, like cooking, requires them to purchase ingredients other than the crops that they grow in their backyard. The center even have the consumers engage in bead making, weaving yarn, and touring the island to learn more about nature. Thanks to the SNILD, uh, Saipan Northern Islands uh, delegation, thank you so much. Um, J.P. Sablon, um, oh, Ivan Blanco, like really spearheading us. Thank you so much. KSPN was able to take part in informing the consumers about the good news. So everyone, we have wonderful news. Yesterday, remember all the money yeah. we've been trying to get from yeah. the SNILD for all yeah. of our activities? Yeah. Okay, so we got it. We got that 94000 oh, from the SNILD. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. 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 yeah! So let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. can you clap for me? Yeah. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Sally Lemis. All right, thanks. Guam Corrections released several prisoners before their time was up. At least one senator wants to find out what's going on over there. Hoppe, here's your Guam news headlines. Chair for Public Safety Senator Tilina Nelson received a response for a Freedom of Information Re Act request filed to DOC, but they were not the answer she wanted. Here's more. We received items that we requested, um, but we did not receive the meat of the items to understand the problem. Wanting to understand the problem and the reason for the multiple erroneous releases from the Department of Corrections. Committee Vice Chair on Public Safety, Talina Nelson. 
sent a Freedom of Information Act to Deb Corps Director Samantha Brennan asking these questions. In the response, a letter was attached saying that some documents are exempt with according, with, according to the statute. However, the documents that are exempt are necessary to understand some of the issues. But this response, you're not too satisfied. No, absolutely not. This res the response is um, is very vague and ambiguous, um, and so we just want to understand why. According to Vice Speaker Nelson, the documents missing are the names of the individuals that were erroneously released, timelines of what transpired before and after each of the releases, and steps that were taken to correct the action. However, she says it seems as if there were no steps taken. One time is too many and now it's a third time they were going about it and so perhaps uh, it's really the operations level. As we've reported this month, a third inmate this year was free for a day and the questions still stand. Were there corrective actions taken and who were the officers involved? Nelson said she has asked the oversight chair of the Committee on Public Safety, Senator Pedro Terlahi, to invoke his right to retrieve the information. The people need to see these documents. The people need to know exactly what happened. In addition to tracing what happened, the committee will be following the department's progress of a master plan, as they were awarded $250,000 from the Department of Interior to conduct an assessment and master plan that ensures safety of the facility. The grant was reaching expiration at the end of this month, but they were given a one-year extension, something Nelson says she was unaware of. I was not aware that their extension was, uh, was granted months ago. I was not aware okay. of that. Is that concerning it, at all that um, it didn't it, inform? No, well, it is concerning, but perhaps we weren't asking the right questions of her. Vice Speaker Nelson says now they know what questions to ask as things are coming into the light and she feels it's necessary to hold an oversight hearing as soon as possible. Because it's been, what, four or five months and three erroneous releases, and if it's done by the same personnel within the chain, mm -hmm. um, there needs to be some kind of accountability rather than just a verbal warning. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. For more, check out KUEM.com. Thank you. All right, coming up, a story that will rip your heart out. Or at least get your blood boiling, maybe? Controversial sports is there. Faster, easier to use. With live TV, recordings, video on demand, and streaming apps, all in a single place. When you're looking for something new, Recommendations are tailored to you. Voice-powered, personalized results to find what you want faster. And the unlimited potential of smart home. The new experience from TiVo is here. As the world's global temperature increases, sea levels are rising. The warmer temperatures cause ice on continental shelves to melt and seawater to expand. We are especially vulnerable because sea level doesn't rise evenly around the world and it will actually be higher here in the Sinai. Already our shorelines and low-lying areas are experiencing coastal erosion and landward flooding during severe storm events. But don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. There are plenty of things we can do now to prepare for these changes. We can elevate buildings and build further away from the shoreline. Planting beach morning glories and mangroves will reduce coastal erosion. Healthy coral reefs protect our shorelines by buffering against strong waves from severe storms. We can also make an emergency plan to use with our families in case of severe weather events. Climate change is scary, but with an informed CNMI, we can work together to reduce our risk to these changes. Hi, I'm Flori, an eye care technician here at Marianas Eye Institute. Eyelids do a pretty good job at protecting your eyes from trauma, but once in a while you can't blink quite fast enough to avoid contact with something like a baby's hand or a tree branch. A corneal abrasion is essentially a scratched eye. The scratch occurs on the front part of the eye that's perfectly clear, and unfortunately it's very painful 
should see an eye doctor right away after any kind of pain in your eye. Once you get to the office, we'll numb your eye up so you don't have the pain anymore. Examine the uh, eye to see exactly if there's what the cause of the problem is. And then we'll treat you with antibiotic drops. And we will put a band-aid on the surface of your eye called a contact lens that we'll leave on for a day or two until the abrasion heals. This has been Dr. Dennis Williams of the Mariana Science Institute. Buenas sports fans. Buenos sports fans, last night, if you remember, if you remember, we did a story that compared baseball here nowadays to 2006, which got me to thinking about other sports, which rode a wave of popularity that has since crested. Well, off the top of my head, I came up with a list of 10. Once upon a time, youth football was the perfect Saturday afternoon. Thunder kickoff. Donovan Atta returns it. He runs through three would-be tacklers down the sideline, streaking in for the score. Whatever happened to women's basketball leagues? As Connie Camacho sees Vanessa Mobel all alone at the other end of the basket. They should expect to see too many baskets like that on Guam, though. Nola Hicks playing for the yellow clad All-American. Scores. Nola Hicks! You cannot leave her alone. Or she'll burn you. And speaking of the ladies, once upon a time women's slow pitch made for a fun Sunday. Pauline Tudela with a fly to right. Faustina Callen comes in. Oh, she dropped it. And then compounded the air with a wild throw to second. Pauline says, thank you very much, as she scampers home with another run. Speaking of slow pitch, remember when the men's league had 20 teams every year? Speaking of men's softball, back in the 70s, men's fast pitch drew the largest crowds of any sport, but alas, the sun set on this sport years ago. Paul Camacho follows with a liner that goes off the second baseman's glove into center field, and that put two on for Roy Sellis. And he comes through with a single past the shortstop. Jonathan comes around to score. Like a rogue wave that came out of nowhere, beach soccer rose up and fell never to be seen again. Anzi shoots, Faye says, forget about it. She scans the sand and finds Tawny, who passes to the left. There's Lanny, she takes her sweet time and scores to make it 1-1. One, one. Speaking of the beach, whatever happened to the beach volleyball leagues? The most fun ever. Staying at the beach, whatever happened to windsurfing? Saipan used to be on the pro circuit. Keeping it in the lagoon, at one time the Over the Reef Yacht Club's regatta was the longest running sporting event on Saipan, more than 30 years. Top sailor Tony Stearns was even selected by Namasa's Male Athlete of the Year. And finally, remember the days when mixed martial arts packed the world resort with more than 500 fans? I do! Anyway, thanks for the memories. 
Last Friday, the KSPN2 Sports Department of Excellence broke new ground by including a building in the top plays of the week despite reservations. Upon further review, it was a mistake. Making the KSPN2 Sports Top Plays of the Week is serious stuff. Not to be taken lightly, it's rarefied air. No building had made the list in the top plays 13-year history. Not even the Koblerville Training Center. So, it was with great controversy last week when the Marianas High School Gymnasium made the list at number three for opening to interscholastic sports for the first time in four years. <laughs> Well, to take a turn from track and field, we jumped the gun. The MHS gym now closed due to lingering effects of storm damage. PSS Athletic Director Nick Gross informs Chief Honcho of KSPN2 Sports that the safety of the students is at stake. So all games this week postponed. And next week, well, we'll have to wait and see. The big question, though, facing the KSPN2 Sports Department of Excellence is... When the gym reopens, will it be qualified for the top plays of the week? Already, a fight is brewing inside the department as company bigwigs are sharply divided on this issue, ready to go to the mat if needed to exercise their will. And no one here wants to lose. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Hey, go Carters, come early and stay late. We have new summer hours for the Seaside Circuit at Mariana Resort. Daytime is pretty hot, but evenings are pretty cool and perfect for racing. Check in at Mariana's Trekking and you'll be off racing in no time. Bring your fans, bring your friends, and show your ID for a special half a day rate after 5 o'clock. And check out our other adventures too, like mountain biking, hiking, kayaking, and off-roading. Perfect for groups, perfect for families, perfect for friends. So Go ahead, bring your best friend. Mariana's Trekking, your adventure professional for 17 years. So what are you going to do this year? At Gold's, a dedicated fitness studio with a cushioned floor is perfect for group exercise. The cardio room features a variety of treadmills, bikes, steppers, and ellipticals. Fitness machines will help you achieve your goals. And the largest free weight area on Saipan gives you comfortable space to work out. Gold's Gym Team is ready to help you get to your goals. Try harder. We know you can do it. Traveling or laying over on Guam? Don't wait around. Zip into Guam Adventures at Zipline Park inside the Hilton Resort and Spa. Guides will take you through a series of zips, starting with a mountain course and then zip over the ocean with spectacular views of Tumon Bay. Six zip lines and all deliver a thrilling experience and it's family friendly so bring the kids ages six and up. You'll love the security of double lines and a new braking system to make riding smoother. The towers are named after the islands in the Marianas. We call it the Island Hopper. Your guides will teach you what you need to know to soar through the jungle with a bird's eye view. Best of all, for residents of Saipan, Kenyon, and Rhoda, you can book this experience at 20% savings. Log on to guamadventures.com and during checkout, use offer code HAFA20. Book it and zip it today. We'll even pick you up. Today's high 88, the low 77, heat index 98, humidity 70%, tomorrow partly cloudy, isolated showers, winds light and variable, high 88, low 78, seas moderate, three, actually calm, 3 to 4 feet, sunrise 606, low tide at 1032, followed by high tide at 542, sunset at 611. So Bob, you went with partly cloudy today, yeah. last night was partly sunny, I like the partly sunny. It's cool. more optimistic. It is. Glass half yeah, full. Thing. It is. It's the same thing. You, you, last night you asked me, uh, partly cloudy and partly sunny, is there any difference? It's the same thing with the glass, half full, half empty, exactly the same. I'd always go partly sunny if I were you. Well, I think it was. But uh, maybe based on your sports full. story that you did today, which lamented I, I the thought, loss you know, of lots of sports. Well, I like and writing good stories. and the, the, it's It just, looks like we're at a little bit of a lull in the sports scene. Soccer and tennis. Soccer's, soccer's doing great. Soccer and tennis. Soccer's uh, exploded. At, at very high levels, but Junior some of those other sports very strong. Um, looks like you know baseball used to be such such, such a popular a strong thing. Sport and there was here. Uh, on Saturday, there was no one at the game, no one, and uh, it just it, it got me thinking. And it's just 
times have changed. The field's not the same, and uh, a lot of just don't have the number of players and the competition and. I don't know. Everything changes. A lot of people playing games, but a lot of times I see the kids on, on, the, their phone on the phone playing that. And uh, I think that hurts uh, a lot we, of the sports participation. We, uh, we like the games that you play, yeah. where you move, yeah. and run. So maybe we can get that back again. Maybe All right, kids, just get out there. Temporary. I'll, I'll get you role. get some video of you uh, playing. Put you on the top plays of the week. All right, you heard it from here. That is new sports and weather on this Tuesday in the Commonwealth. Good night. Good night.